Dear friends, we are here assembled in the presence of God to unite Andrew Simmons and Emily Spurl in marriage. The Bible teaches that marriage is to be a permanent relationship of one man and one woman, freely and totally committed to each other as companions for life. Our Lord declared that man shall leave his father and mother and unite with his wife in the building of a home, and the two shall become one flesh. Who gives the bride to be married? Her mother and I. Please remain standing as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to come together in your house on this very, very special day to witness the uniting of Andrew and Emily. Father, how we thank you for their lives. How we thank you, Lord, for the divine way in which you brought them together. How we thank you for their love for each other and their love for you. Lord, we're so grateful for their families that have given their approval and their support and love to this union. Father, we're grateful for friends who are here to witness this happy occasion. And our prayer today is, Lord, that you will bless this couple richly in all that they do. And Lord, you'll bless each one here and bless this time that we are about, that it might honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ in all that we do and say. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Ministers are privileged to be a part of uniting a man and woman in holy matrimony. I was honored when Andrew and Emily asked me if I would perform their wedding. I've known Andrew since he was a student at Washita Baptist University where I teach. I knew then what I know now, that he was a very special young man that God had his hand on and continues to have his hand on. Then I met Emily and I knew right away that Andrew was a very blessed man. I told Andrew what every married man here today knows, what my dad told me when he met my wife Susan before we married. When I asked him what he thought, he said, son, you're going to outmarry yourself. And that's exactly what I told Andrew after I met Emily. To know Emily is to love her. She is truly as beautiful outwardly as she is inwardly. And she's a very blessed young lady to have Andrew as her husband. Last night as we were at the rehearsal dinner, I looked around the room and just observed everyone interacting together with one another. Four generations in Emily's family, three generations in Andrew's. There's such a spirit of joy, such a spirit of love among everyone there. Just as it is today, as we gather together, family and friends, to witness this celebration and this joyous event. Andrew and Emily, the house is built upon love, which is best portrayed in the 13th chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I know that you will both do this for one another. As Paul says, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So faith, hope, love abide. These three but the greatest of these is love. Marriage is a companionship which involves mutual commitment and responsibility. Andrew, you and Emily will share alike in the responsibilities and the joys of life. When you share a sorrow, the sorrow is halved. And when you share a joy, the joy is double. You are urged to dedicate your home to your Creator. Take his word, the Bible, for your guide. 
give loyal devotion to his church, thus uniting the mutual strength of these two most important institutions, living your lives as his willing servants, and true happiness will be your temporal and eternal reward. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for Andrew and Emily today as they are sharing their love for one another in this beautiful ceremony. Lord, that you will bestow your grace upon this marriage, that you will seal this commitment of your children with your love. Lord, as you have brought them together by divine providence, we pray that you will bless them with your Holy Spirit, that they may give themselves freely one to the other and to you. Give them strength and patience to live their lives in a manner that will mutually bless themselves and honor your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Andrew, will you take Emily to be your wife? Will you commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as a person and to her usefulness in God's kingdom? And will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, in good times and in bad times, and to be true and difficult to her so long as you both shall live. I do. Emily, will you take Andrew to be your husband? Will you commit yourself to his happiness and his self-fulfillment as a person and to his usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in good times and bad times, and to be true and loyal to him so long as you both shall live. I do. The wedding ring is a symbol of marriage in at least two ways. The purity of the metal symbolizes the purity of your love for each other, and the unending circle symbolizes the unending vows which you are taking, which may be broken honorably in the sign of God only by death. As a token of your vows, you will give and receive the rings. Andrew, you will give the ring and repeat after me. Emily, with this ring. Emily, with this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Emily, you will give the ring and repeat after me. Andrew, with this ring. Andrew, with this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. From the book of Ruth, we have a very beautiful passage that Emily and Andrew are going to repeat after me. Entreat me not to leave you. Entreat me not to leave you. Or to return from following you. Or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. And your God, my God. Yeah. 
Since they have made these commitments before God and this assembly, by the authority of God and the laws of this state, I declare that Andrew and Emily are a husband and wife. Andrew and Emily, you are no longer two independent persons, but one. What God has joined together, let no one separate. You may kiss the bride. Now let us pray once again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. It is now my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Simmons. <laughs>